Good morning and welcome for, to this August 14th, 2000. Good morning and welcome to this August 21st, 2022nd online Sunday service for First Presbyterian Church here in Penetanguishing. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you this day. Uh, we don't have too many announcements today, uh, but I would like to thank all of you who continue to uh, worship with us in this way. Um, I know uh, although things with the pandemic have continued to develop and change, it is uh, still completely um, understandable that many choose to be very cautious in these very strange and unknowable times. And so wherever you are, uh, we continue to pray for you and uh, pray that the Lord continue to, to keep you, that the Lord continue to bless you and walk with you and strengthen your faith because we know that it is not ideal that we um, make the difficult decision to not gather with our church families. And so um, although it is always best for our spiritual growth to, to come together and worship, to God, uh, worship together in, in body and in spirit, um, we must also uh, sometimes make difficult decisions in terms of how we must keep uh, ourselves and keep one another safe. And so uh, may the Lord continue to bless you and walk with you and guide your thoughts and your hearts and your everyday steps uh, so that we may never forget that we belong to the family of God. And may, once again, may this service be a blessing to you all. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm chapter 52. It reads, I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what, ha for what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people, and I will hope in your good name, for your name is good. Let us worship the Lord our God. Praise be your name this morning, O Lord Jesus. You have taken upon yourself all our sins, our human misery and death and in our place, suffered and once for all conquered and dismissed them. We know well our plight and you know it even better. Yet now we approach you with thanksgiving for the freedom we have to look away from ourselves and to look to you who did this mighty work for the world and for us also. Grant sincerity to our listening this day, that your true word may govern, move, and replenish us in this hour, that it may comfort, encourage, and admonish us all by its power, that our humble praise may be pleasing to you. Let this come to pass among your people, nearby and afar, wherever people are gathered today to hear and to grasp your promise of resurrection and life. Pour out anew your mercies upon your people this morning as you promised you would. For as your word says, your mercies are new for us every morning. And so may we gather before you to sing your praises and to hear your word spoken. Shape us and mold us, O Lord, so that we may be more like you every day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 
This morning we welcome Jim Anderson as he leads us in the reading of two scripture passages. Our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 8 to 13. And I'm reading from the New International Version, starting at verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people calloused. Make their ears dull, and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, For how long, O Lord? And he answered, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken. And though a tenth remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and oak leaf stumps, when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. Okay, in our New Testament reading this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, reading verses 26 to 30. Okay, and starting at chapter 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Our red-lettered passage today is taken from Matthew chapter 13, verses 11 to 15. And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, You will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their ear, their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. You are always mine, for I have called you by name. I live like Martha, bound by endless duties. How is it Mary sits beside our Lord? Yet you would rather I know a friend. Be afraid, for I have redeemed you. You are always mine, for I have called you by name. I walk with Mary through the Easter garden, not knowing where my hope and faith reside. And when my Lord you approach, I do not seem to know. be afraid, for I have redeemed you. You are always mine, for I have called you by name. I reach like Paul while traveling to Damascus. What power can turn my bitterness around? There is a voice that forgives and loves beyond all measure. A voice that calls my name. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. You are always mine, for I have called you by name. I am not afraid, for you. Last week we read how Jesus began to start teaching his, uh, the followers, those who are coming to listen to him in parables, uh, which would become from this point on his primary uh, method of teaching to those around him. But as we touched on last week, parables are deceptively pl plain, though they to the ancient Jew was relatable and easy to grasp. Jesus began to teach in parables with the purpose of not just telling some easy stories, but of teaching spiritual truths. It was an invitation that Jesus was extending then uh, for all to hear his parables and grasp the message of the kingdom of heaven. But there seemed perhaps to be some com concerns for the disciples who, after Jesus told his first parable, uh, the parable of the sower, according to M Matthew, uh, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him in private, away from the crowds, uh, Lord, why do you speak to them in parables? In other words, why this enigmatic way of teaching? Would, wouldn't it be better to, be, to speak more plainly and more directly, to teach them in a manner where all could understand? If the whole point was to draw people to him, to draw people to the Lord, then why make it more difficult? To that, Jesus responds, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables. Because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, You will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear. And their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Essentially, Jesus taught in parables knowing that their truths would actually be difficult uh, to grasp by some. 
While they might understand the parable on the surface level, they would fail to think about them spiritually. Jesus says that it was to his disciples, to, to you, that it has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But then he says, but to them it has not been given. It was given to the disciples, but not given to those listeners who did not understand what he was getting at. This might strike you as strange, and it is a difficult truth to grasp that to some, God gives understanding of the gospel, of faith, and of repentance, but to others, he does not. And while this might be difficult for us to accept, the Bible tells us that this is true. In Romans chapter 8, verse 20, uh, verse 28, it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And all those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. Jesus is revealing to us here uh, that his teachings are not for everyone in a sense, although Jesus invites all to listen and to hear, not everyone will hear what he sa has to say and accept it as the truth. Not everyone will hear the gospel and believe it to be for them. Not everyone will be faced with the stark reality of their, of their sin and need of a savior and receive him in repentance. To some will be given the understanding and wisdom, the softened heart to hear the words of Christ, and to others they will be given to their hardened hearts. To the common listeners, the parables were simple stories and would prove uh, them very little benefit. I mean, if we return to the parable of the sower, we hear a story about a sower who throws seed on different kinds of soil, and Jesus proceeds to expl explain pretty much precisely what most of them would expect to be true. Seeds on the path were eaten by the birds. Seeds on rocky ground sprung up but didn't last long because their roots could not go deeply. Seeds among the thorns grew but were choked by the weeds. And others fell on good soil and produced a yield of a hundredfold, sixtyfold, or thirtyfold. That part might be uh, the only part that really stood out to the crowd because uh, for the, the farmer, a good yield was considered to be around the tenfold range. But there's something there in this parable that's, um, but there's nothing there in this parable that spoke of anything spiritual, at least uh, plainly. There was nothing that would hint at what Jesus was really talking about. And so it was his disciples who had been with him and who were beginning to see and understand who Jesus was, who would hear this story and know that he was not simply telling a story about some seeds on some ground. He was speaking about some deep spiritual truths. The parable would only yield its riches to those who knew the secrets of the kingdom of God. Jesus alludes to a passage in Isaiah, as we heard read for us today, which described Israel's failure to believe the message of the prophet, which called them to turn from their unfaithful ways. Though Isaiah, after an incredible vision of heaven, was sent out to God's people, he was told that the Israelites would hear but never understand, they would see but never perceive. The hearts of the Israelites were hardened and dull. Evidently, despite it being generations later, some things have not changed. Jesus comes to speak of the good news of uh, the kingdom of heaven, and yet there are those who still continue to have dull and hardened hearts. But then there is some things that have changed. In Christ, those predestined have found the secrets and revelation of the mysteries of God's word and law. In Christ, things that were once hidden from humanity for generations and generations have finally begin, begun to come to light in Jesus' name. It is a bit of a dilemma for the people of God who, by their very profession of faith, are proclaiming, like the prophet Isaiah, Here I am, send me. 
who are then charged with the sharing of the gospel to those who do not know or even resist the truth. These individuals can only be changed by telling them said truth, but instead of having all be drawn to the revelation of the gospel, Jesus proves through his interactions with the Pharisees that the further he tells them, the more he tells them the truth, the further they actually become irretrievably hardened in heart and mind. It is a lamentable reality that, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, though we preach Christ crucified, Christ crucified is a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. To those elected by God, Christ crucified becomes God's saving grace. Only to those whom it has been given by God would they understand the nature of God's kingdom proclaimed through Jesus Christ. It is them who would come to grasp the truth about faith, about growth, about membership, the demands and privileges of becoming a disciple and child of God. But to others, Christ crucified would be nothing more but sheer f folly and foolishness. Jesus' parables uh, would come to do more than just reveal certain truths about the kingdom of God and how it functions to his disciples, but would be used to actually further distinguish those who would be called to follow him and those who are only pretending to be faithful to God. While Jesus would move to teach more and more outdoors, his parables would be used to further enrich the spiritual walks of the faithful or those who desire to be faithful, while continue to actually frustrate and vilify the Pharisees. As Jesus said in verse 12, for to the one who has more will be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Jesus is the one who had come not only to become for us the sacrificial lamb that removed our sins, but also come uh, to, be, to be righteous judge over all. It is with that purpose that Jesus came and will come again to judge the living and the dead, to separate and divide the goats from the sheep to come and call the names of those who will recognize his voice and follow him. In teaching and parables, Jesus is beginning his great sovereign work of judgment over all those who would hear him. Charles Spurgeon wrote, uh, once wrote, it will be a sad day for the church and the world when there is no distinction between the children of God and those of this world. But Jesus' work promises that this will not be the lasting end of the world. There will come a time where it will be he who makes the distinction between those of the world and the children of God. What a gift then it is that we can turn to scriptures now to help us uncover uh, the hidden secrets of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. In fact, might we be reminded today that it really is only through the reading of scriptures jointly by um, and jointly with the guiding of the Holy Spirit that we are able to know how we ought to live. And so, brothers and sisters, may we not take too lightly the fact that some of us have been given the gift of faith. But we know that faith is not something that we as people would be able to manage on our own. Faith is not in the nature of humanity. And while every force in this world will attempt to defeat and beat down our trust in the Lord, we also know that the gift of faith is given to us freely in and through Jesus Christ and could never truly be taken away and that we are now and forever beloved children of God. In many ways, we seem to be living in a time where the difference between the faithful and the obedient followers of Christ and those who are, who are not are becoming more and more apparent. It seems that we are living in a time where some will heed the words of Jesus Christ with understanding, with faith and obedience, while many will seek to find their ultimate salvation in their riches, in their job security, in their performance or value 
who will look for the answers in self-help, in medication, in addiction, who will seek to find freedom in abandonment, in con control, or in flight, who will ultimately be turned away by his words, and thus those seeking for salvation will lose their very lives. As we continue ex to examine these important parables over the next many weeks, may the Lord incline our hearts to his word and not to selfish gain. May the Lord's words be a guiding light to us, and may the Holy Spirit allow us to uncover more deeply the spiritual secrets and mysteries of the Lord, that we might know how to believe uh, and walk in faith before God and one another, in love and in grace, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, our Father, in Jesus Christ, your Son and our brother, we give you thanks that everything is in your sovereign control and that you are so very good. We are sorry to have often been blind and deaf to the light and the meaning of your word. We are sorry for all the perversion of our life resulting from this stubbornness. We know very well that without you, we go astray time and time again. We ask you for your Holy Spirit to touch us, to awaken us, to make us attentive, humble, and courageous. This we ask not only for ourselves, but for all others as well. We ask this for the lonely, for the angry, for the bitter, for the sick in body and soul, for the destitute and for the refugee, for all those who, uh, whose grief and needs are hidden from us, though not from you. We ask this also for our families, for all parents, teachers and children, for government and court officials, for the preachers and missionaries of your gospel. Help them and help us all to bear what must be born, but also to think, to speak, and to do what is right, above all to believe, to love, and to hope, according to the measure you give to them and to, other, to us. We return to you a very small portion of all that you give us. You have blessed us with so much. And so what we return to you, we ask that you would use to the glory of your name, to continue to build your kingdom and to continue to do your work. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the privilege that you grant each of us the, the privilege to participate in your work and ministry in these ways. Though there may be some amongst us that are unable to give this day or wish we could give more, may you receive our hearts as an act of worship that is pleasing and acceptable to you. Faithful Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks this day. We know that you hear our prayers. And so Lord, we commit all these things and we spread out all of our uh, all of our cares at the foot of your, at the feet of your throne. We pray all of these things as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
now, may you go and grow in the knowledge of the grace of God and the person of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the promises that are revealed to us in, this, in, in his word and in his scriptures, that strengthen and embolden us, that set us free from all fear and anxiety into a life to be lived full and abundant within his glory, within his mercy, within his grace, so that you may go to fulfill the very purpose for which you were created, called, and are now being sent. Amen. <laughs>